Hello, everyone. Welcome to this evening's presentation, Job Search Strategies, presented by WorkNet Batavia. Thank you for joining us. My name is Drea Flores, and I'm the business librarian at the Aurora Public Library District. Our presenter, Ari Kaufman, is a career resource navigator at WorkNet Batavia. In this presentation, she will be discussing tips on how to locate your next job and how to set up a plan to keep your job search on track. So now it's my pleasure to introduce Ari Kaufman. Hello everyone. Welcome to this evening's program, Job Search Strategies, presented by WorkNet Batavia. Thank you for joining us. My name is Drea Flores, and I'm the business librarian at the Aurora Public Library District. Our presenter, Ari Kaufman, is a career resource navigator at WorkNet Batavia. In this presentation, she will be discussing tips on how to locate your next job and how to set up a plan to keep your job search on track. So now it's my pleasure to introduce Ari Kaufman. Hello everyone, welcome to this evening's presentation, Job Search Strategies, presented by WorkNet Batavia. My name is Drea Flores, and I'm the business librarian at the Aurora Public Library District. Our presenter, Ari Kaufman, is a career resource navigator at WorkNet Batavia. In this presentation, she will be discussing tips on how to locate your next job and how to set up a plan to keep your job search on track. So now it's my pleasure to introduce Ari Kaufman. Thanks, Drea. Happy to be here and thanks for um, hosting me tonight um, for this job search strategies presentation. Um, I'd like to um, first get started um, by talking about uh, what WorkNet Batavia is, um, which is where I work um, and kind of what we do. So WorkNet Batavia is a part of the Illinois WorkNet, which along with its affiliates and community partners um, provide a one-stop delivery of services, connecting individuals, employers, and education and workforce partners to career planning, education and training, employment resources and tools, and workforce programs. At WorkNet Batavia, we do serve residents of Kane, Kendall, and DeKalb counties. Um, so if you live in a different county, there is a WorkNet center serving your area. Uh, we assist job seekers and offer training services uh, if you are unemployed, laid off, or even underemployed and looking for new skills and training. Uh, we do have appointments available for detailed assistance in things such as job search, uh, career coaching, resume creation and enhancement. Uh, if you're looking to build a LinkedIn profile, we can help you with that. Uh, any interview strategies, if you have an interview coming up and you wanna practice. Uh, and then we also make referrals to available services and support from our partners. Um, and then inside our center at 143 First Street, we have a great career resource center, which gives you free access to computers um, for job search and research printers, copiers, scanners, and fax machines. So you can come in, sign into the center and utilize these free services. Um, if you need to use any of these resources, you can feel free again to walk into our center or give us a call. Our contact information will be presented at the end of the, of the presentation for your reference. Uh, so without further ado, I'll just go ahead and jump into our job search strategies presentation. So it's a job seekers market right now. So we keep hearing all about how there's a labor shortage and about how all of these companies are hiring or trying to get workers in the door uh, with increased wages and bonuses. So why are job seekers still struggling when it comes to finding jobs? Um, so I wanna know from you, what is your biggest challenge with finding a job? Uh, you can feel free to enter your responses in the chat or take a moment to unmute yourself and tell me about some of those challenges. Anybody want to share? Yeah, th yeah this Go is ahead. Rob Davis. I haven't hey, really Rob. started the process of 
a job hunter yet, this this uh, workshop was going to have a jump jump start. You know, I'm uh, I'm retired. I'm a retired uh, uh, executive in the telecom industry, and I was oh, just wow. looking for opportunities to to come, you know, to do something uh, back in the employment world, back in the the corporate world, but probably something much less stressful than than what I've I've done over the course of my career, as yeah. well as something that's probably part time. So, you know, I might be a little bit uniquely different than some of the people you interact with, but still, yeah. I have an interest in making sure that I put. You know, I've been out of the game for about six years, and I was hopeful that this uh, this particular workshop at least can give me some insights. Uh, of what, how the game is played right now in terms of getting it put in the door. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. That's, um, I hear a lot of that actually, if, uh, if I'm being quite honest with you. Um, I, I hear people that are just, um, you know, maybe out of work for a while and looking to jump back into the game. Um, maybe people are looking to make a career pivot, but they don't know where to start. Um, or maybe they're just trying to determine like what job board to use. Um, so yeah, sometimes finding a job too is a full-time job all on its own. And that could be, um, challenging and in, 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 even in itself. Um, so yes, we'll go over some of those strategies to help you optimize your job search. Um, once you do begin that. Uh, so the learning objectives for today, um, I want to prep you for your job search. So um, I want to talk about finding the right positions, the right companies, and then building out your network. Um, I'm going to talk about where to locate jobs. So some uh, information on networking, job fairs, job board websites, and employment and staffing agencies. Um, and then we'll also talk about uh, getting organized as well. So creating that plan uh, and keeping track of your progress. So targeting the right positions begins with you. So think about what's your career goal? What are some of your strengths? Are you looking for the same position in a different company or are you looking to make a career change or pivot? Um, think about some of your strengths. This kind of self-reflection can help you hone in on the type of jobs you look for that will work for you and not just be a temporary fix. Um, now, if you're feeling lost, you can conduct a self-assessment by thinking about what are my goals? Is there a certain type of work I'd like to be doing and what does that entail? You can also get an idea from a personality or interest assessment. So if you're making a career pivot or if you're um, just starting out in your career, and I know, I'm sorry, this doesn't apply to you um, because you're looking for something a little bit more unique, uh, Rob, but... Um, if you were interested in doing an interest assessment, I would recommend ONET Interest Profiler. Um, it's a great assessment to help you get an idea of careers that would be suited to your specific interests. Um, again, this can help you focus in on how you need to target your job search. Now, once you have an idea of the positions you want to get into, start thinking about some companies that you'd like to work for. Uh, you could do a quick Google search for jobs in manufacturing, for example, um, and see what companies continue to pop up. Uh, you can start by researching these companies and ask yourself, do they have a shared vision or goal? Uh, does their values align with yours? And would you be able to work within that company's culture? Now you can also read reviews on the company as well and see what current or former employees are saying. Um, some of those websites include Glassdoor, Indeed Reviews, and Salary.com. Uh, of course, you want to make sure that you're applying to a company that is going to allow, align with your values and supports a culture that you are going to thrive in. Um, so, if you um, have done any networking, um, maybe you've um, actually gotten a job by talking to somebody before. Um, does anybody want to take a guess on what percentage of jobs are actually found and um, actually filled through networking? I would say over 50, 60%. That's a good guess. Absolutely. It's 85 
85% of jobs are filled through networking, which is a huge amount. So it goes without saying that your network is invaluable. When you are expanding your network, you want to try and add people that you're that are going to add value to your chosen industry or field. You can also think about connecting with leadership, hiring personnel, and other colleagues within the organization you are looking to jump into. Uh, again, your network is going to be key in helping you find that job. So you want to try and nurture those relationships as, as much as possible. Networking opportunities are all around you. Networking helps us build connections with others and could bring you in touch with someone who has insider information about a job that has not even been advertised yet. Um, some places that you could go to network include um, connecting with people at an organization within your chosen field, uh, using social media such as LinkedIn to build out your image and your brand while also connecting with others, uh, volunteer events are a great way to connect with other people of varying backgrounds. Um, you also want to seize opportunities to also volunteer within the organization itself. Um, this could also help you get a shoe into that organization. Uh, job or career fairs and workshops, which I'll go into a little bit further uh, with job fairs on the next slide. And then informational interviewing. Um, this you can do at a company that interests you. If you prefer an in-person conversation rather than an email, um, consider an informational interview. Uh, you'll get an inside scoop on what it's like to work at a company from the employee's perspective. With informational interviewing, you have a unique opportunity to interview the company while adding a contact to your network. Um, that contact, of course, may have that insider information on job positions for you as well. Uh, anyone around you, honestly, can contribute to your network. Um, some people around you now that you could connect with include a family member or even a friend of a friend. Uh, sometimes meeting new people in a social setting can be beneficial. Uh, these people may have insights into an industry that you could be interested in as well. Sometimes even just talking to your family members can help you get started. Uh, maybe you know an uncle that knows somebody else who's also in the field that you're interested in that could connect you. So you never know until you get that conversation going. Uh, neighbors. Neighbor oh, yes. Go ahead. Could you speak a bit more about uh, these informational interviews? Are you speaking, are they, mm -hmm. are they the result of your networking activity or are companies, some companies, I'm certain not all, but mm -hmm. are companies, uh, do they have an open, how can I say, they, are they receptive to uh, being contacted by someone who's not currently within the organization to host or hold a informational uh, dialogue? Yeah, no, I'm glad you asked about that. Um, so I remember um, back when I was um, conducting an informational interview um, for college, I actually had to reach out to, um, it was United Way. So I reached out to United Way and I said, hey, I'm looking to learn a little bit more about your organization. Can you connect me with somebody who um, works within this department? Um, and they were really receptive to that. Um, so they connected me up to, you know, this individual who I got to have a one-on-one -on -one interview with, got to ask my questions, got to really learn about the organization. So you will find, you know, if you do reach out, people are receptive to that. They like talking about themselves and the organization and, and what that looks like. Um, I would say one of the best tools to kind of get an insider like foot in and reach out to somebody in an industry or a um, uh, or a job that you're you're maybe potentially going to apply to um, is LinkedIn. Um, do do you have a LinkedIn at all? Yeah, uh, yes, I do, and and I must say that. Uh, when I was actively in the workforce, uh, it would have been almost impossible for someone to contact me off LinkedIn and get a meeting with me because I was just too busy to meet with someone I didn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I'm so I, I, and I, maybe you know I was, it was just I was just considering myself too busy. 
Now, mm-hmm. I, to your point about networking, though, there the probability increases that I might speak to someone I didn't know if they were referred to me by someone. But mm-hmm. let's say a cold call or a cold introduction. Uh, honestly, Ariana, uh, I felt that I, I just didn't couldn't afford the time uh, mm-hmm. to do that. Okay, um, so you would be more likely if it was like a friend of a friend then. So that, a, that's that's kind of what. Friend. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of what LinkedIn's about, right? So you know this person who might know this person over here in this organization. Um, they could introduce you, right? Um, yeah. So they're more likely to spend the time with you to have that informational interview. So again, you can use that LinkedIn as a tool to mm-hmm. increase your network and to gain more information, more insight into that industry. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right, no, that's a, no, that's an excellent trick question. I've, another trick I've, I've found also is using LinkedIn, um, you can uh, connect with people from different groups that you're in. Um, mm-hmm. And one of the most common is just, you know, uh, what school you went to. So uh, think about like, you know, I, I went to, um, you know, Northwestern. So uh, if someone says, hey, I went to Northwestern too, I'm more likely to talk to them than that completely cold uh, uh uh, cold call that uh, situation that you put out there. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And that uh, that's actually on my list as well, Jerry, that, uh, the alumni. <laughs> um, absolutely. It's, it's a lot easier, you know, when you have something in common, whether that be a person um, or a school or a previous employer, uh, which you can also look at as well. Like, hey, we both worked at um, at DeVry University, you know, I'd, I'd like to connect with you now that you're you're here, you know, what does that look like for you? I, I'm thinking about moving into something similar. Um, so yeah, use, use that commonality um, to make those connections. I think that's a really great point. All right, any other questions before I move forward here? All right, I'll take that silence as a no. Okay, so I know I mentioned job fairs previously. Um, So job fairs are a great way to also connect with local employers who are looking to hire and further further grow your network. So they are also a wonderful opportunity um, to ask questions as well. Uh, You can usually find out about local job fairs through either word of mouth, a quick Google search. Sometimes LinkedIn has information Um, We also will have that information as well, as well, local WorkNet locations, libraries, um, and then the Illinois Department of Employment Security. Um, For us, we'll usually send out our information on those job fairs through social media and our newsletters. Um, You can also find them usually on the Illinois Job Link website as well, underneath their calendar of events. Now, if you do end up attending a job fair, I just want to let you, or just want to note, it's important to research the employer who will be attending the job fair so that you can be prepared uh, with any questions while also appearing knowledgeable about their company. Uh, if it's in person, you do want to dress as though you're going to a formal interview uh, and have copies of your resume handy in case you find a job opportunity. Uh, Now, one of the most common ways to find jobs is, of course, using a job board. Uh, I have a few different job boards listed here. Um, Career One Stop, Illinois Job Link, LinkedIn uh, has their own job board. USA Jobs is good for government jobs. Uh, Indeed.com is the most widely used one. Uh, Glassdoor. Google also has a job board, uh, which I like because it pulls from a lot of different other sources. Um, career Builder, NPO.net for nonprofit, Snag a Job for great hourly positions, and many more, right? We know there's tons of job boards out there. So utilizing job boards is great. Um, but one key takeaway that I want you to leave with is use job boards as a research tool, then try to apply directly on the company's website within their careers page. Uh, It's usually found at the very top or the very bottom of their website. Uh, This will serve a few different purposes. Uh, One, it eliminates the job board as the middleman. So your application goes right into that company system. 
Uh, it protects you from any job posting scams because those do exist. Uh, and then it prevents random job boards from collecting your information then spamming you with job alert emails. Um, of course, these job alert emails can clutter your inbox and make it harder for you to see important communication from hiring professionals. So if you can apply directly on the company's website, um, if there's no way to apply through their website, it's okay to use that job board. Um, some companies don't always have a career page, but just as a general takeaway, try to apply on the actual website. Now, depending on the job word um, that you're using, um, let's just say you're utilizing Indeed, you can upload your resume to that job board um, and select the option that you're open to starting a new job. So this will help you do a passive job search and let employers find you. Uh, you can use job boards to search by title. So such as like project management or industry specific jobs like manufacturing jobs. Um, when you have your search results, you will also have the option to filter out jobs to meet your specific criteria, um, such as distance away from your location, salary, and experience level. Filtering will give you a more targeted job pool to choose from. Now, before you start applying to these jobs, I want to give you a small pointer for your resume. Um, more than ever before, there is a huge focus on skills instead of specific job titles and experience. So tailoring your resume to match the skills from the job posting will increase your chances of your resume being viewed by the recruiter. Um, skills could include things like ability to multitask, expert in Microsoft Office, like Excel, Word, or PowerPoint, or excellent organizational skills, data analysis, things like that. And, um, and Rob, have you ever heard of an applicant tracking system before? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, you're yes, familiar. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, an applicant tracking system for anybody that doesn't know, or ATS for short, is a computer program that will scan your resume against the job posting to see if it matches up with the skills the job is looking for. If your resume has a low match, the ATS system will either reject your resume or move it to the bottom of the pile for the recruiter. Uh, the more skills you put on your resume that coincide with the job posting, the more likely the chance will be that it will be reviewed by the recruiter. So um, another quick tip is to bring any relevant information from your experience to the forefront to showcase your skills and experience. Um, again, matching those skills, you know, helps get through the ATS, but really putting that relevant information at the forefront is going to hook in that recruiter to keep reading and increases your chance of that callback. Uh, so I wanted to just touch base on um, employment and staffing agencies. Um, I wanted to talk about a few pros and cons of each. Um, so employment agencies, um, they do act on behalf of both job seekers and companies who have positions to fill. The employment agency will first partner with companies that need new employees. Then the agency will seek out and match the right people to fill the position. As a job seeker, it can be very beneficial to reach out to an employment agency first. Um, now, the disadvantage of working with an employment agency is that it can be a little bit of a lengthy process. So the process of finding a job through an employment agency can take more time compared to a staffing agency. That is because most of the positions that employment agencies fill are permanent or last for a longer period of time than positions that staffing agencies provide. For this reason, the matching process can take longer. Now, the benefit of working with an employment agency is that um, it provides new opportunities. So working with an employment agency to find your next position can open the door to new roles and opportunities. Um, and that's because employment agencies are the first to hear about new opportunities, which will provide you with more options. Um, now, staffing agencies are similar to employment agencies um, because they act as a liaison between companies that need workers and qualified job seekers. 
the agency matches you with the best position to fit your skill set. Uh, so unlike employment agency, the main difference is that the staffing agency will also provide um, temporary positions. Uh, the disadvantage with working with a staffing agency is that most staffing agencies tend to specialize in the type of positions they offer to job seekers. So for example, they might there might be an agency that specializes in providing staffing that is focused on the manufacturing field only. Uh, so if you do decide to go with a staffing agency, just make sure that that agency actively fills positions that align with your career field. Uh, now the benefits of working with the staffing agency, you do have that ability to transition to a more permanent role. Um, now, while employment agencies typically only offer opportunities that are already considered to be long-term, a lot of the positions that a staffing agency provides are usually for a shorter term. However, many of the roles, although at first labeled short-term, uh, have the ability to turn into a permanent position if the fit is right. Uh, also, working that temp job grants you with a unique opportunity and experience uh, to test drive the industry, if you will, or test drive that job. All right, so the last thing that I wanna touch on is how it is crucial that you get yourself organized in your job search. Um, you wanna set goals for yourself to stay motivated. Break the process of searching and applying for jobs into a series of goals that you can accomplish in 60 to 90 minutes. Uh, and then, you know, do the same with networking. How many people do I wanna reach out to in my network per week? Uh, do create a daily or weekly schedule. Plug these goals into little time blocks on that schedule. Will you be applying every day or maybe twice a week? Work on your plan. Uh, commit the necessary amount of time each day to complete each goal or task. And then monitor your progress. At the end of each day or week, Verify that you are on track to meet your goals. Uh, determine your goals for the next day or week and plug them into your the blocks on your schedule. And then I would also suggest using a job application tracker tool uh, to help you keep track of the applications you've sent out so you know who to follow up with. Uh, you can do this with uh, Excel or a Word document. There's also some templates that you can get from Google, whatever works best for you. Uh, and this just helps you kind of, again, stay organized. So say you applied uh, to 30 places in a week and one actually calls you back and it can be uh, kind of hard to recall where and when you applied. So you can reference that tracker sheet as well. Uh, you can also use that to track, again, who you need to follow up with. So you'll want to make follow-up calls to the companies you um, contacted or interviewed with um, within a, a week. Uh, and remember, researching the company ahead of time is always a great idea. Uh, when following up, be concise to the point and highlight any commonalities that you have between you and the company. And then I, uh, that's it. So I wanted to thank everyone for attending this presentation on job search strategies. Uh, I sincerely hope that you found some strategies here that will help you optimize your job search. Uh, you will get a, a copy of the presentation along with a quick survey as well. Uh, you can find the information for WorkNet Batavia here on this final slide. So if you would like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one session, uh, we can certainly set something up further to discuss your needs. Um, and then I just want to open it up for questions. Does anybody have any questions for me? Anything um, that I can help you out with? Going to maybe assume no. <laughs> no, Soma just joined, it looks like. But um, Soma, did you have any questions? I, I, so um, I have only one question, actually. Sorry, I'm late. Um, 
okay. I had to go. But yeah, so I missed the uh, uh, class, uh, whatever was discussed before. So, so I am uh, started looking for started looking for job, and mm -hmm. um, uh, it's it's kind of a job fear, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. I have started. Okay, so I've started looking for job. My uh, qualification is uh, I'm a bachelor's in accountancy, and I do have a knowledge of uh, Microsoft Word and Excel. So mm -hmm. I'd like to know means um, what kind of role uh, would match my skill set, and where should I look for it? Uh, all those means. So I'm preparing for um, I'm preparing for interviews too. I gave a couple of one two interviews. But uh, that didn't match with my uh, schedule or whatever didn't match with them too. So uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to know, sir, uh, what, uh, what what role would fit best to me? What would be the best way to look for it? All those. Uh, could you help me on that? <laughs> I certainly can. Um, would you like to schedule a one on one session so that we can kind of delve into um, your specific experience further? Yeah, sure. That would be nice. Okay, <laughs> perfect. So um, I have our information on here. Were you able to get to gather that really quick? Yeah, sure. Okay, perfect. And then let me go ahead and um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here. And then um, I'm gonna throw my email in the chat, my personal email. Okay. Um, go ahead and email me directly. Okay. Um, and then we can set something up, uh, a time to meet to kind of go over um, your resume, your specific skills, your career goals, um, and kind of how to optimize that in your job search. Okay. Okay. That sounds great. Okay. Perfect. Just threw my information in the chat there for you. Um, okay. You, again, you will get a copy of this presentation and this is a recorded session. So you can go back and listen to it. Um, okay. And then you can also visit our website at www.worknetbatavia.com. Jerry threw that in the chat as well. Um, so check out our website. We do offer a variety of other resources as well. Um, so if you wanted a referral to our partners, um, we can always um, get that set up for you um, in addition to career coaching services. Okay. I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Drea here to wrap up, but I, I really do appreciate everybody hanging in there with me tonight. Um, and I appreciate your attention and your uh, participation in this job work, job search strategies workshop. Thank you for that wonderful presentation, Ari. Before we wrap up, I would just like to note that the Aurora Public Library District offers a variety of resources that can help you with your job search and career goals, including an online resource called A to Z databases. With A to Z databases, you can search for job postings and research the profiles of potential employers. You can find A to Z databases on our website at www.auroraPublicLibrary.org. Thank you to everyone who attended this program, and I hope you have a wonderful evening.